Welcome back. In this video, we're going to have a look at how to use labels in views. Labeling is an important part of expressing what information is contained within a plot. Sometimes it's necessary to tell the reader what it is they should be looking at, what information is present that's not contained within the axes or the title, and so it can be useful to call things out by labeling. In views, this is rather easily done, and it can actually automate a lot of the labeling tasks that we're interested in doing. So let's have a look at how we can label, how we can control the appearance of labeling, and how we can automate some of our labeling tasks. To do this, we're going to use the data we saw before for medals won at the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. So just to make things very clear, let's add a label to the x-axis, and this is number of medals there. And so we're talking about bronze, silver, and gold. Now one thing is that we don't have bronze, silver, and gold labeled, and so how would we know that? Maybe what you want to do then is add those words inside of here. The simplest way to do this is to just click on this widget that says text label. Once I have the text label, let's imagine that what we wanted to label was bronze with an E. Okay, right now I can see the ZE part of bronze, but nothing else. And again, this is because views draws things basically from the bottom of our stack up so that the things on top appear on top. In order for label to appear on top, I need to move it above all the bar charts that give us this information. So let's just put it up at the top using these arrow keys. Now I have bronze. One way to position it where I want it is to just move it right here. That's okay, but it doesn't allow us to control basically how, where this appears on the horizontal and vertical axis very well. I could type that in here and right now, under label in the properties window we have bronze and it's at an x position of 0.44 and a y position of 0.87 in a position relative we'll talk about that in just a moment it also is reading the x and y against the x and y axes and this is actually referring to the name x let's imagine that this was called something other than x then inside the label i would need to select that axis from here. For instance, let's just add an, another axis for a moment. This is axis one. Now I can choose to have this X axis be axis one. And if this axis one had been a direction vertical instead, now it would appear not under X, but under my choices for Y. Okay, let's get rid of this. That was just simply there so we understood what was meant by X and Y axis under the properties window for this label. The X position, what if this was, let's pick a round number, 0.5. You can see it's put this gray or this black box right in the middle from between zero and one. And so when we think about relative mode for position, this is what it's doing. It's going between zero, which is where the left axis ends, and one, which is where the y axis ends. So if I wanted this at, let's say, a quarter of the way, it'd be here. If I wanted it at a tenth of the way, it would be here. The same is happening for the y positions. If I made this zero, it would put it at the bottom. If I made it one, it would put it at the top. And so how about 0.9? There are times where this relative positioning can be useful where we want to control something so that it doesn't matter how I change the axis, this stays in the same place, right? If I go into X and say, oh, I don't want it numbered 150 or to 120, but to 150, this label stays exactly where it was. And that can be useful. Our other option is to have this be axes. And now these numbers correspond to actual numbers on the axes. The USA is, let's say number one, and so if I put this now as one, it puts this black box right where that is. If I made this two, it would move it down to China and so on. So it ties it directly to the numbers that are associated with this axis. It's maybe a little easier to see on the Y axis. So let's go ahead and put this back at the USA. And then for this position, how about if I set it to 10, what would happen? 
Now you can see it's sort of lined up with that 10. And so it's reading coordinates off of here. Why would we want to do that? Well, now if I rescale this, so then instead of being 120, it is 150, this moved so that it's always staying in the same place relative to the numbers on the axis, not the length of the axis. And so those are our two options for thinking about where this goes. We also, of course, could control the formatting. And so under the main, I can choose to hide this or not. I can have a horizontal alignment that's left. I could choose it to be something like center, and now it's center aligned on this black box. The vertical alignment, I could choose to be center, and now it's in the middle, or I could choose it to be top. So let's just make this center center for now. And then you could control the angle. So what if I wanted this at like a 33 degree angle? Fine, hard to read. I don't want that, but you could do it. I could have margins if I want. Right now, they're not gonna do anything, 10 point, because I'm not actually showing the margins. Instead, the margins show up when I have this not hidden. So if I click, unclick on this, then I have a white box. I know it says transparent, but views doesn't always handle this well. It's basically white and I could have other colors or blue. All right, so we're gonna hide this just for a moment. That box could have been transparent. So maybe 50% transparent makes it decrease, but we're gonna have it hidden for now. Back under the main menu, uh, the last thing is clip, which isn't gonna do anything for us right now. We have the text. Again, we can change sort of the font. So this could have been times. I'm gonna have it match everything else that we had. So rather than times or like courier or something like that, I'm gonna have this Avenir. And then font 10 is fine. Color, everything else that is here is colored gray. What if I had that? It's kind of actually hard to see. What if it was instead of black, white? I'm gonna like that, and I think I'll be able to see the white against the gray, so we can keep that. I could have it be italicized or bold. Here I could choose to hide it again. We've already seen what happens here, where I can have a background color. And then I can also put a box around here. This is hidden, but if I have a box, then my margin comes back in, and I can again control this, so this could be like a one point margin, but I'm drawing a box still. All right. What if I didn't want to see the box, but I wanted to have a margin? How about a transparency of 100%? Oh, I'm on the graph. I don't know why that happened. Okay, I could have a transparency of 100%. And now I still have a box around here. I just can't see it. The same thing, of course, I could have done here. I could like choose to show that, but have it be at 100%. So rather than using the transparency here, I think I can just change the transparency there to be 100%. All right, so now we've got this. How could I make more? Well, I could just like copy and paste this, and then I could like choose to put that there, and then I could drag it over here or change it. And then I could like change this to silver, and I could go through and do my labels this way so that I just put a label every single place I want it to be. But Views actually has an easier way to do things. Let's go ahead and hide these, just for now. Let's have a new label, and we'll call this Serial Labels. What I can do is I can use the data to put things where I want them to be. So let's just say Axes for right now. Let's go back and look at the data that we're using. Let's say I wanted to label everything that was bronze. So I'm gonna call this bronze labels. And what we want to do is call it bronze. Oops, not bronze three, but bronze. I'm gonna just go ahead and copy this so that it says bronze every single time. I'm gonna say save. Then I'm going to go back to our views file. I'm gonna hit this arrow to reload. Now I have access inside of the data to that bronze label. What I can do then is I could say, I want this serial label to just say bronze over and over and over again. So I'm gonna say, just read what bronze label is. Then I want you to put it at the X position that counts for the bronze count. And I want you to put it at the Y positions that are the position. 
Okay. I'm going to take this and I'm going to move it up so that we can have it written. And you'll see now I have bronze, 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 bronze. And what it's done is it's read the bronze label text and it's put it at the X position that counts bronze count and the Y position that is positions. Let's go back to the data real quick. It's writing the word bronze at a place that is at 33 on the X and one on the Y. It's writing the word bronze again that's at a position that's at 18 on the X and two on the Y and doing that over and over again. So we can basically have views automate this labeling task by putting them all here. Of course, it's put the bronze over where the silver is and we don't want that, but we know how to actually change it now. What I could do is I could go into here and change how it's aligned. I want it to be right aligned and I want it to be aligned in the center. And now it looks pretty good. Um, I could, of course, change this to white like we had. And now I have bronze written several times. One thing that you may not like is that it butts up right on this line. And how can I change that? I think the easiest way is to set the margin to something like one point. Doesn't affect anything yet because what I need to do next is basically hide, unhide this background. Remember, we don't really want this to be transparent. It could be any color we want because what we're gonna do is set the transparency to 100 so we can't see it. And now that margin is basically something we can use to control how far off this line these numbers go. Now, it's a little too big so that when I have this nice cushion off the line, I can't see all the bronzes. And so maybe in this case, I'm gonna to have to sacrifice a little bit of our consistency in order to get it to fit. Instead of it being 10 point Abner, let's have it be nine point Abner. And now it all fits, right? And we could do the same thing. So instead this was like serial labels. How about this is like serial bronze labels. And then we can repeat this again and I'll just do it one more time so you can see what's happening. We'll call this serial silver labels. And then we'll move it up so we can actually see. I'm gonna say that instead of it being there, I want it to be at the bronze plus silver. And then the Y position is acceptable and it's pointing at something that says bronze. So let's just make a new set of data, silver labels, and this will say silver. And then I just want to copy that many different times. I'll save that. Then I'll go back into views. I will reload this. That will give me access now to under instead of bronze labels, I should have something that says silver labels. And now they'll all say silver. Of course, what I could choose to do is try to put them in different spots. Right now they're working off of this rightmost part. What if I wanted it right in the middle? Well, then I could go in and calculate exactly what the middle point is for each one of these. And then I could go back to the data and make a new thing that says middle silver position. And then I would enter what I think each one of those values would be. Then I would go back into views and I would point the X position at that middle silver values column. And it would automatically redo this. Okay. So that's one way to, to automate this. Of course, I could have something that's just serial labels and I could have bronze, silver, and gold in all of them and a huge column that has all the different positions. And then it would put down all 15 labels at once. You may like to do that, you may not, but it is an option. Okay, I think at this point, hopefully you have a basic idea of how labels are gonna work in views, how we can add an individual label and control its formatting, especially how to create margins and use them, and how to use serial labeling, where we use the CSV sheet that we have in order to place labels in multiple positions at once exactly where we want them to be. And so with that, go forth and make well-labeled plots in views.